I'm Gary Thompson from FX Open UK. And this is our weekly video taking a look back at the major stories that have affected or impacted the financial markets in the last few days. We can't really have this video without talking about the G7 meeting. That's a meeting of supposedly the largest superpowers and economies in the world that was hosted in Germany this week. Obviously, one of the major topics for discussion was the war in Ukraine, with several government leaders reaffirming their support both monetarily and in other ways to the government of Ukraine and the people of Ukraine. Now, back to the economics of the meeting, Chancellor Schultz said that they had discussed the risks of the slowdown in economic growth across the globe and the impacts that may well have on member economies, the sharp increases in inflation that we are seeing across the board, the shortage of raw materials, and of course, the decrease in supply of energy resources. And in fact, Germany's Minister of Economy compared the current situation in the energy sector with a Lehman Brothers effect, which is quite a big statement if you think about it. Now, Bridgewater Associates, one of the largest hedge funds in the world, off the back of some of these meetings, increased their short to 10.5 billion US dollars on stocks in the Eurozone, according to Bloomberg. And in fact, they stated that 28 of the Eurostock's 50 constituent shares are now in a short position with Bridgewater. As you can see from the chart of the Eurostox 50, there is a bit of a downward trend there, but we're still waiting to see what sort of impact this will have in the coming days. Following on from the G7 meeting, and obviously some of the talk about energy supplies, let's have a little look at a Bank of America oil forecast that came out this week. Now, the Bank of America has said that they see three main scenarios here, one being a US recession. Now, that would rely on oil trading below the $75 mark. The second scenario they're talking about is no recession, obviously I think the one we'd probably all prefer, which would see oil trading above about $150 per barrel. Now the third scenario would be increased Western sanctions to limit Russian oil production and supply. Now what the Bank of America said is they would be looking at oil trading above the $150 mark in order for this scenario to occur. In recent sessions, we have seen the oil price increasing, akin to scenario three. So what does that mean for oil moving forwards? Well, interestingly, Berkshire Hathaway, of course, probably needs no introduction, have increased the number of shares of Occidental Petroleum this week by 794,000. That equates to about a 16.4% stake in the business. So does Warren Buffett see this as oil entering a more stable position in the coming months? Who knows? But certainly, again, this sort of indication is one to be taken into consideration. Now, what we can see on the chart, it does show that the price has rebounded from the, the trend line slightly. And in fact, new prices are looking at about a 50% of the overall decline. Again, an indication that we may see them rising further in the future. But obviously, with the global situation, nobody can be sure. So leaving oil aside, let's move back to the world of currencies, and particularly the Great British Pound. Now, obviously, lots and lots of activity with the Great British Pound over the past few days, weeks, in fact. It's still considered to be the world's strongest fiat currency, but it's fair to say it's certainly under the microscope currently. Now, inflation, as we know, has been playing a major part in the struggles that sterling has been having. But there are other countries that have been having similar inflation issues. And in fact, the opposite could be said of Japan, as we've discussed previously. You know, there are no inflationary issues currently in Japan, but the yen is remaining really, really rather low. However, the US dollar and the euro, for example, two economies which are seeing similar inflationary issues compared with us in the UK, their currencies certainly seem to be doing a lot better. Now, what we are beginning to see, particularly around London itself, are comparisons with the devaluation of sterling way back in 1967. And in fact, then, then Prime Minister turned around and said, well, it'll have no impact on the pocket of your average British citizen. Clearly, that didn't actually come to fruition, did it? So, what other things could be driving this? We're seeing a dramatic increase in the role of unions again. And we've been seeing several strikes across the country recently with more planned in the future. So, a, bit, a little bit of civil unrest, shall we say, could well be having an impact on the rate of sterling as well. We're talking about wage increases. We're talking about inflation, wage growth rates, the cost of living. All of these coming together, causing heck of a lot of pressure on sterling. In fact, you know, so far, the value in 2022 of the Great British Pound has decreased by 9%. Moving forwards, there doesn't seem to be much of an agreement on the best way to handle this. So keep your eyes and ears open for news on sterling, and let's see which direction it heads in the coming weeks. 
Staying with currencies now for our final story, and we're going to take a look at the Turkish lira. Now, anybody that's been in the currency markets for some time knows that the Turkish lira is a particularly volatile currency and does attract a little bit of interest from across the globe. But we have been seeing some pretty massive volatility for some time now. Inflation in Turkey currently approximately 70%. We mentioned earlier the inflationary pressures on sterling. With inflation running at 70% plus, you can assume there's some pretty strong pressure coming on the Turkish lira. Whilst it may not be a major, it is widely traded and is often used as a little bit of a barometer for some of your more exotic currencies around the globe. A lot of movement that's happened in the last week or so um, has been attributed to the government banning companies with large foreign exchange reserves from being able to get new loans for business. In fact, what they've been forcing companies to do is get rid of some of those foreign reserves, increasing their holdings in the Turkish lira before they can get loans to try and help the buoyancy, try and shore up the Turkish lira slightly. This has led to some whipsawing of prices though. And uh, we've seen that this week. Some significant rises followed by some pretty significant falls. Whipsawing prices always make for an interesting market. Keep your eye on it, trade it sensibly, think about using stop losses because some of the movements we're seeing can be quite severe. That's it for this week. Keep your eyes open for our economic calendar next week and have a look at what may be happening in the markets to affect your trading decisions.